Well, howdy there. So, I've uh, got another cruising along with goggles here, and today we're going to do something yet again different. And this is going to be a special transport. We're going to uh, just go over and pick up the trailer and the load and our escorts. And we're going to travel from Farmington to Raton, New Mexico. And um, so uh, let's get going. I'll explain what's going on along the way. If you haven't seen a special transport before or done one, uh, we'll get uh, the gist of it along the way. Yeah, so the uh, special transports are kind of fun. I haven't done one in a while, so uh, <laughs> hopefully it all goes well. Uh, but uh, the idea is... Turn right. You get um, escort vehicles, and uh, unfortunately the lead pilot vehicle is a police car instead of an actual pilot truck. Usually, any time I've ever done it, it's been a pickup truck, and uh, yeah, it's kind of weird having a police Keep car right, in front. But then uh, turn right. But what's going to happen uh, is uh, we're going to go and pick up the load, and you're going to see all kinds of turn right. things happen that I'm not controlling. It there's the intro screen. There'll be a bunch of people milling around working on the load, etc. It'll reset my driving hours, fill the fuel tank, and the time of day will become whatever the turn right. Whatever the time of day for the load is. So we don't have a lot of say in what happens once we get there. The whole parameter right. of the trip is going to be set for us. And um, and then we'll uh, we'll just roll with it once we get going. So you're about to see uh, Get ready to turn left. The intro and everything is gonna be pretty interesting. But the route that the reason I'm doing this is the route I saw to this left. special transport is epic. And I'll explain that along the way. And this will probably be a two part episode, so anyway let's Here we are. Kind of on time. Now you can see that icon up there that we drive into. It's got the extra stuff going on up above the long load. Just to let you know you're driving into something different. So here we go. Oh, what's going on? Yeah, I guess this is what we want. Yeah, that's it. So this is the route. It's crazy. Uh, I've driven this route before just for fun. I've never had a trip, a, a load on here, and uh, it's pretty wild. It's only 326 miles, but we are going to be going a maximum of 40. So what I'll probably do is when we get down into the meat of this location here, I'll just split the video in half and do two parts. It should be totally manageable. So let's take the job, and uh, you'll see what happens. Yeah, you get this... Um, uh, warning screen it gives you a truck analysis and says you know our hills traversal yeah we're right at the top heavy cargo right up there uneven train not bad so it gives you the lowdown on your truck the wheelbase at uh, effective wheelbase of 319 inches is hurting the maneuverability number normal cargo well I've got my heavy haul engine in here you can see 3688 foot pounds of torque, 1005 horsepower. So they're thinking, yeah, that's overkill for normal cargo. But it gives you a rundown on the uh, transmission specs here and your final drive. So 1440 first gear, 073 overdrive, um, 355 diff, two powered axles. And uh, yeah, let's uh, carry on. We'll get this weird intro here.
We'll be on TV. <laughs> yeah. Pedal to the metal, man. So, tanks are refilled, driving hours reset. So, this is just all part of what happens. So, it's a triple low boy. So, three trailer units with three axles each. That should be pretty entertaining on that road we're going to go on because it's really windy. So, and here's the instructions. So they're just saying here, uh, the rear pilot vehicle pulls out first, then the front pilot vehicle pulls out, and then you make the lane change. Oh, you'd be doing a lane change. That's a sequence of events. And so we go. It's like that. We're off. So that police car out there is waiting for us. We better get our beacons on. Well, we got to swing way out here and get this trailer out of the yard. And there's our that pickup truck. That's our rear pilot vehicle. Turn left. And to me, that's a normal pilot vehicle, not a police car. So anyway, let's get way out here. We should be able to get this trailer out of there. You can't see my dash display, but down here, it's giving me uh, top speed right now. Our speed limit is 35 miles an hour. Get ready to turn right. Now we're not going to obey the lights. The traffic will all be blocked off. So turn right. It's all go. He'll be waiting for me to catch up to him. He wants me to go 35. 40 now, it's up to 40. I'll just set my cruise control, dial it into 40. That'll keep us, keep him happy. If you're using the, uh, on your cruise control settings, if you set in game preferences, zero tolerance, It'll hold your 40 or whatever speed you've got dialed in. Keep left. Up or downhill. Turn left. So that's kind of nice. Turn left. You gotta be in the lane behind him. It'll, uh, if I had stayed over there, it, it, I've had uh, instances where it will, uh, you get a warning to uh, smarten up. Okay, so now we have traffic here, so we do have to stop for this light. Some touristas over there. I probably didn't need the uh, the full motor, the uh, 
a big enchilada here because uh, we won't be going over 40 miles an hour. That uh, sound you hear, that sort of, I don't know, ringing, whirling, weird sound in the background is when the uh, uh, cruise control is controlling the deceleration. Here, that sound right there. Sounds like a really long telephone ring. But yeah, so our speed. Is there a pilot truck back there? All in the public at bay? When you get on uh, some... Well, watch what the cop does here. He's going to jaunt over into the other lane to... He'll dive at that other vehicle. Look. <laughs> hey, you slow down, he says pretty aggressive. Yeah. Pretty weird. But anyway, yeah, the uh, on four lane roads it can get pretty funny. Um, like you'll get traffic passing and doing all kinds of stuff. Which I guess they have a right to do. And uh, this um, it depending well depending on how the trip is placarded, like you're placards and uh, what you're licensed for if you've got the road or not the pilot vehicles have a right to hold people back depending on what you're doing and at least that's what it is here hey <laughs> you take a little run at that other police car <laughs> but uh and our cruise control is holding us at 39 on this uphill. That's pretty good. If it was really flat ground, I might grab an extra gear and just let it loaf along at 40. But with the changes in terrain here, which is actually you should look at, it's pretty nice. So this road I've been on lots of times with loads, but we're going to turn off on this sort of back road to uh, Raton. Raton? Raton? I don't, I don't know how that's pronounced. Yeah, we're in the Flatbed Brothers uh, truck livery here. some sort of storage silo that we have on here. Oh, I'll bring it back inside just to see what's going on here. Oh, that's still 40. That's where it's nice to have the resume too. And you uh, hit the brakes and realize, oh, I want to get back going again, just resume to the speed you're at. So all good, we can get back outside. This thing just fits in the camera frame. I can't go, oh, I can't go a little further back yet, yeah, look at that.
Yeah, I've taken these triples pretty much everywhere you can in the game. So this will be interesting on this road. I just hope the uh, <laughs> our uh, front escort is successful in keeping that left-hand lane for us. Well, we got uh, intersection up ahead. Let's get back inside here. Yeah, because we're gonna, you know, there's gonna be some hairpin corners there that you'll need to uh, keep control right traffic. and then turn right. Uh oh, going too fast for that one. Turn right. Just going all right, schmuck. Where are you? Get up here. Yeah, some of the wide loads are, uh, or sorry, the special transfer loads, um, are some that are really wide, and uh, like uh, I don't know, Lincoln, um, like 16 feet wide, I think is the widest, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think this is, I don't think this is the longest one. There's. Uh, I don't know what it is. It looks like a great big uh, industrial heat exchanger unit built inside a great big. Uh, Get ready to turn left. Like a steel structure. Okay, here comes the fun road. So well, we got here pretty quick. Maybe we'll be able to do the whole trip in one video. Turn left. Let's see how this goes. That's a convenient place to park. Yeah, we're all right. Okay. The fun begins. Sometimes this can get interrupted. Uh, like if I slow down too much, or the he senses I'm out of my lane or whatever, uh, they can do a reset on the trip. Or it'll, I can't remember what the message is. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but it'll say something to the effect that. Uh, go back to a save point and try again, which is kind of annoying because sometimes it's completely out of your control. Now I'm going to have to get over here in this other lane and he may, he may not like it. That's the only thing about this over here. See, he's, he's going, where are you? That's kind of stupid, isn't it? You know my load is that long. That's annoying. I don't know, I'm not getting any traction on these tires. That's another thing I was thinking of testing is road surfaces. Because I noticed some road surfaces seem to have different traction than others. Guy, little run. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't think that was the windiest bit of road. It'll get a little windier up here. I think after we, there's a little town we're going to go through. A little one stop, one horse town. Might be a touristy place, I'm not sure. I don't know the particulars of the neighborhood. But that, uh, you see up ahead, that mountain, we're going to uh, go across there. Wow, look at this ravine. Oh, that's cool. Excellent. Never went through here so quick the other times so I didn't get to have a good look at it. But yeah, we're going to uh, be navigating that range up there. It looks scarier from here than it is in real life. <laughs> that reminds me. First time I ever saw the Rocky Mountains. Uh, my brother and I, my oldest brother, we uh, were living in Manitoba. and He had a 30, 37 Dodge pickup hot rod. It was a 327 four-speed. Uh, pretty cool truck. We just called it blue. It was painted two-tone blue. And we outfitted it with a, built a little camper on the back. Not a, not a camper size camper. It was more like a, you know, it looked like a little cabin kind of thing on the back. Not very big, it's a small truck. And enough that we, we put a foam mattress thingy in the back. And our de deal was we were going to Vancouver Island. Or we're actually going to Banff for the touring tin rod run hot rods and uh, it was a three-day weekend event and we were going to camp you know with all the other hot rodders there visit do stuff and then carry on west and um yeah long story short the rocky mountains yeah so we're never been west before and we were we've been living in manitoba pretty darn flat and we're driving west and getting um we're probably still 50 miles from calgary or so and on the horizon we could see what are those weird clouds or what what are we seeing on the horizon there and it was the mountains and when you're on the flat part like um you know it just looks like there's this all of a sudden you see a wall and you're not you don't see the foothills or anything that the gradual introduction to the mountains all you're thinking is holy cow there's just a wall there how are we ever going to get through that <laughs> it was my thought it was just so strange but uh what a great trip oh see he's going to slow down again because i had to get over there keep going bud i'm going to try and make I'm making that around yeah i gotta really play fast and loose with the guardrails but anyway it was pretty cool. Pretty neat trip. A lot of fun. Great, great truck. That was a really good truck. He'd put, I uh, still had the original uh, solid front axle in it, but he'd grafted in, uh, made his own spindles essentially. And put, uh, I guess, so you gotta consider the time this was. This was 19. 77 when we went out there to that rod run and he built the truck in 75 74 and we went to manitoba in it in 75 that's when we moved there from ontario and um, and he had like 69 nova front discs on it he grafted in which now seems like wow archaic 69 nova discs but at the time it was pretty good and uh yeah it was before radial tires i can't remember the size of the tires they were it was oh well, how did they do it it was a letter and a number m50s or l50s mickey thompson big wide things kelly springfield on the front and slotted uh five slot aluminum polished wheels look pretty good 
There's a close ratio Muncie. And I believe 308 gears, which was kind of not exactly performance thing, but the diff came out of the Impala that he got the 327 from. But yeah, it was great on the highway. Like it just cruise. And we ended up doing uh, all of Vancouver Island on it that was paved at the time. We went everywhere we could on paved roads. Let's hope I don't lose them here. Don't hit the brakes. I'm still here. Oh, come on. I'm not supposed to pass them. Come on. You can do it, bud. Yeah, this game needs a rewrite. They gotta fix that. There we go again. Maybe I gotta take half the line. What's that doing with the trailer? We're okay, let's not run over our escort here. Yeah, I'm here. Come on. Keep going. But yeah, old Blue, that was a good truck. And we, we, we moved to Manitoba in it. I, can't, I don't know if any of you know 37 Dodger trucks of the era. It's not big. Like the cab is your shoulder to shoulder in there pretty much. Yeah, I'm a pretty big guy. I'm 6'3". And uh, we went out there. We moved to Manitoba in that truck in the winter. Drove it through northern Ontario in the snow and snowstorms. And this big honking Mickey Thompson's on the back. <laughs> yeah. All our worldly belongings. Yeah, it was a pretty, pretty cool trip. Go straight. And, and a dog uh, sitting between us, John's dog, uh, Olek, uh, Yellow Lab. Man, it was crowded in there. But when we went out, of course, we did have the dog with us. We went out on that mud trip to uh, the west. That was a good trip. Uh, so your windy roads, we had, uh, we went from one of the paved roads we went on in Vancouver Island was uh, um, from the east coast of the island across to Tofino. And uh, wow, what a road. And of course we, were, we had a CB radio in the in the truck and we could keep uh, in touch with you know other truckers and stuff and people would be yakking at us all the time because uh, they got a kick out of seeing the truck go by so there's lots of radio chatter and um, I still remember and John and I both talk about it a lot even still when we were going across to Tofino, the highway has got, it's, this is a pretty straight road compared to what we were on there. And uh, there was rock overcrops, like outcroppings, and the road is cut, you know, around them and whatever. This guy knew the road, like the back of his hand, obviously, been on it many a time. And he was driving a Ford flat front like pre CLT like a real old one I won't say what we used to call them because it'd get in trouble but um, yeah it was really something else we were following this guy and uh, he just he had a single on the back single trailer uh, like a little guy short because me and the road wouldn't stand for much more as it was then 
probably a vastly different highway today. This is 1977, of course. But uh, anyway, he uh, he just we'd be what we were behind him. We'd watch. He just dart around these outcroppings, and the trailer had just missed by like a foot or so. It was just amazing. And he's yakking to us on the radio, <laughs> on the CB. And every time, you know, we can hear, he had a Detroit in it, I think. It was some pretty high winding motor. We could really hear his engine. And, uh, but you could get a real listen to what was going on inside the cab, in the background, because his mic was picking it all up. So, and he had that mic going pretty steady. And, uh, up and down through the gears. And it was amazing. I had it going on. Man. Yeah, it was pretty good. Pretty good memory. We weren't really enamored with Vancouver Island. We were both mechanics at, at the time. And we were thinking, gee, look at all the cool uh, equipment they have out here because it's all logging stuff we're seeing. You know, equipment that we don't see. And, you wouldn't be seeing on the prairie. You're thinking, yeah, it'd be kind of interesting to uh, wrench on some of that stuff. But it's kind of a sensory overload, too, that uh, going from the flat to the... Um, that just the density forest just all around. Density, you know, you can... couldn't go uh, you couldn't go a straight line more than five feet anywhere in it yeah it was neat good trip yeah I would have been 21 years old at the time. Yeah, that truck ended up going to a fellow up in northern Manitoba. And, uh, you know, John had it for many years. And, uh, oh, I can't quite remember what happened. I think John almost got it back. But the guy pretty much wrecked it and left it sitting outside for a long period of time. And it was kind of heartbreaking, you know. It would have been nice to get it back. Get ready to turn left whatever but you know it wouldn't have been the same okay let's see I'm gonna crowd to the right here I can't nothing in the mirror I should be able to get over Turn this left. far I oh, didn't go too far here far enough that uh, looks good. Yeah, you just can't buy your old vehicles back. When I sold my the Louisville I factory ordered and you know to my spec and really nice truck and you know my view I loved it it was great did what I needed it to do and how the, I think I, I don't know if I told you about it before I won't go into it now but yeah in fact we ordered it specific for hot shots 
and with the deck, like a tw I built a 20 foot deck on it, and it was a uh, hot shot express, man, it was great. And um, did really well with it, I made great money with that truck. But, when I sold it, when I had my second back injury, and I had to get out. Keep right, and then um, exit right. The, uh, I went back and saw it a few years later at the company. They they bought exit it, I right. guess, and put a driver on it. The company I used to lease my, or uh, do the owner-operator thing with. And, uh, man, was it sad. Cause, I mean, I took care of it, and kept it clean, washed it, kept the salt at bay, greased it religiously, really took good care of it. Oh, I'm going too fast for that. Um, but anyway, I went and saw it, and see the door handles are rusting out of it, and uh, it just was dilapidated. He never put a coat of deck, uh, paint on the deck or headache rack again wheels were rusty. Like it was insane. It was like a punch in the gut. Now we should get a warning. There's a lane change maneuver coming up here. I would expect. Yeah, here, changing lane maneuver. You can't see it behind that. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> wow. Try that one. There we go. Caught me off guard there. right and then turn right turn right okay Go around the corner I'm coming Ready to turn left. Turn left. Turn right. It's all over now. Oh, we didn't get a wheel in there. There we go. Oh, it's over. We don't get to pull into a parking spot. Okay. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you stuck around for that, guys. That was, uh, I did, you know, one shot, but a little longer than maybe anticipated. Here we are, all alone. Everybody buggered off. <laughs> uh, the TV's gone. <laughs> it's over. Okay, take care, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye for now.